half hour. Uh, my name is Clarissa. I uh, work for Community Housing Camera. We represent housing associations across Wales. I'm really pleased to be with you here today. Um, and what I wanted to do, I was really struck by, by Mamon's introduction this morning where he talked about uh, the propensity sometimes to talk about the housing crisis in terms of the bricks and mortar of the homes. And of course that's such an important part of it. But I have been so struck and moved this morning to hear all of the stories which really bring to light that this is really about community people, the prosperity of an area and the health and the happiness of those that live within it. And I wanted to start there actually with people and to share some research that Community Housing Cymru has done with its housing associations across Wales about the impact of the housing crisis on their tenants because that's what we're here for, that's what matters. And uh, here's some findings of our shortly to be launched cost of living research. And uh, as you can see, it's demonstrating that actually, yes, we're living through a housing crisis, but really what we're seeing is a number of competing crises all coming to bear on the poorest in our society. And those on the lowest income bearing the brunt first and hardest. 19 housing associations told us that they were working to maximise income uh, across their tenants. 19,000 tenants received support in the first six months of this year. All of the housing associations we spoke to talked about the work they do to help tenants to navigate what is a horrifically complex system. For those that work in it day in, day out, it is difficult to be able to connect people with the support that they need to be able to keep their heads above water and to be able to uh, prosper and to live well within their homes because it isn't just about a home, it's about living well within it. As you can see from the slide, hardship grants are being made available by housing associations and many other support organisations, many of whom are in this room today. 70% of housing associations expect the demand to go up again this winter, they expect to put more money in to support in tenants. And I thought what was really striking, and as I said, there's a report coming out uh, next week with lots more detail on this, but food, furniture and energy were the top reasons that people got in touch with their housing association for help. The real fundamentals of living well within a home. So what does this mean in terms of services and organisations? Well, of course, it creates huge pressure. So here are some findings from, again, shortly to be uh, released uh, set of research, which we commissioned with Camorth Cymru, who represents homeless and support providers in Wales. And this is around the impact of chronic underfunding for preventative services. And we're here today to talk about a right to adequate housing, to live well within your homes, to be able to access homes. And I would argue that supporting the fundamental, the foundation of prevention within that is absolutely crucial. And you can see from the, the statistics on the slide that we are chronically underfunded. 81% of providers saying that demand is increasing and not just demand increasing but the complexity of those support asks are increasing day on day in and day out. 91% uh, say they've got a workforce crisis, they cannot afford to cover the increase in their staff wages, they are losing staff to supermarkets who can provide better working, working conditions, more consistency around uh, salary and, and support. A number of them talked about the concern about being able to bid for contracts coming forward, having to withdraw. And we, alongside our, our colleagues in Kimorth and others, are arguing really strongly in the run-up to the Welsh Government election that homes are support grant, this funding that supports prevention to keep people in their homes and to prevent people reaching crisis point should be at the core of any housing strategy to end the housing crisis in Wales. Now, of course, there's wider external pressures, which I know all of you in this room will be well aware of, but this, this graph never fails to kind of put the chills in me, actually. And look, the, the house building uh, line is the, the top blue one. You can see is, is rising further and faster than anywhere else. Um, increase in 36% in the cost of house building. Uh, the Charles Institute of Housing Cymru uh, took some research two years ago, but it remains as relevant today as it did then. Uh, in which local authorities and housing associations all talked about that stretch on their services. And that's what we're seeing across the board, whether it's building new homes or whether it's making sure that the existing social homes that we've got are great quality. They are safe, warm and people can live well within them. All of this costs more, it places strain on delivery organisations and means that in an environment where need is growing, it becomes more and more difficult to keep up. So. I've been asked to focus on challenges, but I couldn't help myself but just to spare a word about what some of the options might be. 
And I think ending the homeless crisis is possible. It is absolutely is, and it is necessary. But it needs to be planned and phased. And for us in Wales, we suffer from a lack of data. We really do need to understand the challenge of the housing crisis at a granular level in communities. That means supporting local authorities in their local housing market assessments, but it's wider than that. It's about understanding the movement of people around our country, understanding why people in which people are moving into our homes in social housing, what is making that, that, that tenancy a success and preventing um, any loss of that tenancy and really understanding that better so that we can make sure not just the building of housing reflects need but the allocation of that home <coughs> is suitable for the person that goes into it. And that is not easy, that is a complex job and it requires uh, people who know their communities, grounded in their communities with the data behind them to help them. We need to build certainty where possible for the delivery arm of the system. By that I mean associations, local authorities, though, uh, third sector organisations that are out there day in, day out, providing support. And that's about um, keeping as much certainty in the system as we possibly can in an environment where things are changing everywhere that we look and there is risk everywhere that we look. And that feels, it feels important in, in terms of sustainable services, but actually if we don't do that, if we miss this opportunity, then we miss the opportunity to maximise the impact of the Welsh Pound, to keep it into communities, to keep spending it locally. And one of the statistics that we are most proud of in Community Housing Cymru is the, is the pence in the pound spent by Welsh housing associations that stays in Wales. It's 85p in the pound, we want to get it up as high as we possibly can. To do that, we need to be able to have certainty over policy, plans and funding so that we can then pass on that certainty to supply chains, to SMEs, to make sure that that pound keeps circulating. I think we have to recognise that this is a system under pressure. Some of the statistics I shared with you today I think demonstrates that, but there are many, many more reports which show that there is tension across <coughs> our system. And we know that money is in scarce resource. So, yes, there is an argument around funding and longer term funding, but alongside that, we'd like the Welsh Government and others to be able to think about uh, where the implementation gap is here. There is a limit to how quickly you can go on all fronts all at once, and there is a cumulative pressure on delivery bodies. So making sure, again, that we build that certainty within the system. And then finally, investing in fundamental services. And I know that, I'm sure, when we get to our panel discussion, we'll talk a bit about what stops us building quicker, faster, at, at pace. Some of those things are around investment in prevention, but also investing in those services that makes everything else tick planning services, consenting services, those kinds of things. And really focusing on how we make sure that we've got that really solid foundation stone with a system that, that works and allows a flow of homes to come through um, so that we can meet housing need.